Welcome to Alvinza Studio, where creativity meets innovation. Today, embark on a journey with us as we explore the extraordinary world of architecture and design. In this episode, we delve into the realm of unconventional living spaces. Join us as we unveil the captivating tale of a shipping container home nestled in the heart of Canada's breathtaking landscapes. Discover the fusion of sustainability and modern living as we unravel the intricate details of this innovative dwelling. From its humble beginnings as discarded containers to its transformation into a stylish sanctuary, witness the remarkable journey of repurposing. Get ready to be inspired as we showcase the ingenuity and craftsmanship behind this remarkable project. Join us on this exhilarating adventure as we uncover the beauty of a shipping container home in Canada. There are many container houses in Canada, but this time we will only discuss a few, but even so, this video will definitely inspire you. Canada is the northernmost country of Northern America, set right above the United States. It spans a vast amount of terrain, but with most of the population in the more temperature south near the U.S. border. Here are some of our favorite Canadian shipping container homes, apartments, houses, and other container projects. The Acres at High Shore is a container home rental with a design born out of a unique solution to a problem. Made of four 20-foot shipping containers arranged in a pinwheel configuration, this container bed and breakfast is a charming place to visit in Prince Edward County. For those who don't know, Prince Edward County is a scenic rural area a couple of hours east of Toronto, Canada. It has wineries, historic villages, and plentiful outdoor activities along the various bays and waterways. As an established vacation destination, it's the perfect place for a rental guest house. This brings us to the owner, Allison Laudy. Allison left the hustle and bustle of Toronto with the plan to start a bed and breakfast after leaving her corporate job behind. After forming a business plan for her idea, she got to work looking for property and quickly found what she now calls the Acres at High Shore. It's a 14-acre property that included an 1870s farmhouse for her to use personally, a huge wooden barn, and an open field perfect for building her rental property. The property is about 15 minutes from several local destinations and towns, including the main arterial highway, the 401, making it easy for visitors to access and depart for short activities. But as Allison got to work planning and designing several different container cabins spaced around the property to use for short-term rentals, she encountered a problem, the local government. Specifically, the local zoning laws meant that she could only have a single housing unit detached from the main home. It's a rule that didn't apply to waterfront properties, but unfortunately hers was landlocked. Faced with this challenge, Allison and her designer went back to the drawing board and came up with a novel solution. By arranging four shipping containers into a large square, placing wooden gates in the openings between containers that presented as a continuous wall and having a pergola-style roof over the central courtyard, the four containers would count as a single building. Although there are four containers, there are actually only three rental units. Allison calls the container rental unit suites instead of suites as a play on words. The fourth container is used as a kitchenette and sitting eating area. Although it doesn't have food preparation equipment, there are a refrigerator, sink, and dishes available for all the guests to use. There are obvious pros and cons to this design, but it was the solution to the zoning problem. While each container is individually rentable, you're literally just feet away from other guests. While this might be ideal for a large family or group of friends, strangers may find the proximity a bit jarring. But on the flip side, it may be a great way to meet new friends and enjoy the rural property together. Each of the three container guest suites is the same. There's a bathroom in the back of the container where a sliding barn door alternatively covers either the toilet or the sink slash shower area. On the edge facing the courtyard, an entrance door was added. On the side facing the land, a large floor-to-ceiling window was installed. And where the doors of the container are located, a small patio was built that uses each door as a vertical support for the wooded deck. Besides that, there's a wall-mounted television, a split-unit HVAC, and a queen bed. The units feel larger than they are thanks to the large windows and abundant natural light. And they feel more private than you would expect since the majority of the views are outside away from the courtyard where the other containers sit. Building the container rentals meant dealing with the usual scrutiny from building inspectors, 
but with good drawing and the necessary approvals, everything was accomplished as planned. The requirement from the county to build all three units as one building likely saved a good sum on the construction, keeping all the electrical well water gas and septic utilities as well as Wi-Fi in one place meant a lot less on-site work. The containers sit on a screw pile foundation that required far less earthwork than a concrete foundation and had the added benefit of elevating the containers a couple of feet off the ground. This made utility hookups much easier and gives better views through all the windows. Allison purchased the one-trip containers as shells. Holes for the windows and doors had been cut, reinforcements welded in, and paint added. The rest of the work like adding spray foam insulation, wiring and plumbing, and building the walls was accomplished on-site by local contractors. Did using containers make the project cheaper? While we don't have the final costs, Allison has indicated in prior interviews that she thinks that containers may have cost her a bit more than other types of construction. But in return, she got very durable structures that can endure the hard winters and hard use of rental customers. Plus, the novel architectural style is a draw that helps her attract visitors and charge more per square foot. This bold container home in Calgary was built for an environmentally conscious family. It's made with four shipping containers stacked in a simple 2 plus 2 configuration, but the finished product turned out quite luxurious looking. Set in an eco-friendly community Echo Haven, this container house is in good company with other similarly minded owners. As the pictures show, the outside of the home is completely clad in stucco and metallic panels to blend in with the neighborhood. And even though you can't tell it was built with containers from the outside, the neighbors surely noticed during the construction and appreciated the benefits. Inside, there are a few exposed container walls used as accents, but otherwise the home has drywall and floor coverings to hide the container origins. The floor plan is slightly unconventional in that the living rooms and kitchen are on the second level, so there is walkout access to the patio over the non-container-based garage. The first floor holds the bedroom areas. There's also a basement underneath the containers, as is common for the area. You have to appreciate this owner's dedication to having a sustainable lifestyle and trying to minimize his impact. But the design of this container home is so nice that you can just as easily appreciate it for its looks and modern touches too. Colorado is filled with scenic mountain towns and villages where locals and out-of-towners mix together while enjoying the scenic nature at their doorsteps. Salida is one such town perched in central Colorado's Rocky Mountains at about 7,000 feet in elevation and home to about 5,000 or so people. Visitors to Salida have several housing options, including this inspirational shipping container home. And visitors have increased in recent years thanks to being named the best unsung mountain town by Outside Magazine in 2017. Just a mile or so outside of town, set up on the side of Methodist Mountain, You'll find a container home that the owner Tommy Lorden sometimes refers to as the northbound train. It's instantly recognizable from the dirt road out in front with its bright orange exterior and huge porch. Lorden, a real estate professional in Boulder, created the bold container home after visiting Salida on fishing trips and falling in love with the town. The home is built with three containers, all 40 feet long. They are set beside each other to form a 24 feet by 40 feet rectangle. Inside, the walls of the container are cut in various places to make several of the rooms wider than 8 feet. One look at the topography of the area makes it clear that flat building sites are hard to come by unless you will one into creation by doing extensive earthwork. However, because of the container's strength, the builders were able to set the containers on a pier foundation. This provided several benefits. First, it raised the entire home up off the ground, making the scenic views just that much better. Second, it greatly minimized the amount of heavy equipment needed to move dirt around the site. Other than boring a few holes in the ground for the piers, the ground was able to be left relatively undisturbed, with the containers floating up above. In addition to piers for the containers themselves, additional piers are used to support that massive front and side porch. It was a small amount of additional to work to create a breathtaking outdoor space that really extends the living area of the house. Because of the elevation of the piers, entering the house from outside requires ascending a small metal staircase. It's connected to a concrete staircase cut into the embankment, which takes you down the traditionally constructed garage. 
and yet despite a plain rectangular floor plan, the execution ends up being far from ordinary. Everything from the exterior color to the indoor-outdoor design to the interior design all play a part in making this home truly special. Thanks to the low-impact concrete pier foundation, a home like this could be built almost anywhere. A sloping site or floodplain location wouldn't really matter, but by orienting the home towards the best view, you really allow the geography of the location to work with the home, not against it. And that perhaps is one of the greatest inspirations about this home. And last and finally there is Stack Market. This is a bit different because it is not a residence but a market, yes, a market. The Stack Market is a large retail mall built with shipping containers, occupying two full blocks and making use of well over 100 cargo boxes. It's Canada's largest shipping container marketplace. The Stack Project is filled with unique spaces and venues. Foremost, it's a retail marketplace with room for over 30 tenants across uses like food and beverage, clothing and artisanal offerings. But it's also a community hub, a performance space and a living art installation. For tenants, the experience is unmatched. They offer leases ranging anywhere from two days to over a year so that everything from pop-up shops to established corporations can be a part of the retail ecosystem. And they have a variety of sizes with larger tenant spaces created by joining two or even three containers together. But even if you don't buy anything, Stacked still has something to offer. With tons of Instagrammable views, pedestrian-friendly pathways, and abundant courtyards to play and relax, it's a great place to spend a few hours with your family. It's certainly worth discussing the numerous art installations that incorporate shipping containers. The project was constructed with containers on three levels, but only the first level is occupied by retailers. Containers on the elevated levels are empty and serve only to fill out the design as a canvas for the numerous murals. If you're wondering how such a large, impressive piece of property wasn't already being used for a larger project, that's a story in itself. In years past, the brownfield land had an industrial purpose as the site of a smelting plant and coal storage facility. Over time, the city of Toronto came to own it, with eventual plans to turn it into a park. The developers proposed a shipping container marketplace as a temporary use of the empty lots until the city moves forward with the permanent park. In this case, containers were the perfect solution. Their unique appearance is a perfect throwback to the industrial nature in the land's history. And more importantly, containers offered a semi-permanent way to build a resilient collection of facilities that can still be easily moved in the future. Someday, you're likely to find a modified version of Stacked sitting in an entirely new location.